Well, folks, first and foremost, a will, just so you know, typically is your admission ticket to probate court. And a will typically, from my experience, is woefully insufficient to properly protect your affairs from the metaphorical four-headed monster. Because a will is going to end up in probate court. A will does not avoid probate court. A will spells out who's in charge of your affairs and who gets your stuff when you're gone. That's important, but it puts you on the radar. Oftentimes, it's waking up to sleep in bear if there's creditors out there lurking or looming, looking to put liens on your estate for maybe nursing home bills, uh, Medicaid payback, estate recovery, things of that nature. And maybe disgruntled beneficiaries as well. So a will, folks, um, usually woefully insufficient to properly protect your affairs from the metaphorical four-headed monster. But if you have a will, you want to make sure it has sufficient powers in there. And typically those powers would go to your personal representative. Personal representative. Uh, but again, folks, if you truly want to slay the metaphorical four-headed beast, a will is just not going to cut it. Again, it's going to be woefully insufficient and the estate is going to get bit by the four-headed monster from my experience. So folks, the solution around that is scrap the will because a will equals dreaded ugly milk crate and probate court. Work with an elder law attorney that has a process and this is the solution around that folks. Number one, create your trust, but it's not a magic red book. Think of your trust like a treasure chest, okay? Number two, get your treasures into your treasure chest. So if you want a home, make sure your attorney, your attorney drafts a deed, transferring the home into your trust or treasure chest. Get your cash assets in there as well. However, work with an experienced estate elder law attorney that knows how to cross the T's, dot the I's to get all your treasures properly in your treasure chest. Third, head, third step on the three-step treasure chest process is just manage and monitor your treasure chest. Keep a good eye on it for what I call the three L's. Changes in law, how often will that occur? How often does Congress change the tax code? How often does Medicaid change the Medicaid rules and regulations? How much control do we have over that? Second L is changes in your life with your health, finances, and relationships. How many of us have the same health, finances, and relationships five years ago as we do today? And the third L is changes in learning in the elder law industry. So folks, my recommendation, work with an experienced estate elder law attorney that has a process. First step, again, is creating your trust. Second step is funding or retitling your treasures to your trust or your treasure chest. Third step, they're gonna help you update the trust as you journey through the path of life. Why is that important, folks? Because the old saying is, the day you sign your trust is important, but what's the most important day you needed to work? And folks, hopefully that's many years from now. But the tricky part is nobody knows the date on the calendar to do that. So folks, if you found this educational video helpful, please scroll down, post a comment, post a question, because a member of our team will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like to learn more, folks, pick up a copy of the book on Amazon, How to Avoid the Four-Headed Monster, of estate planning and elder law. Thanks for joining me today, folks, at elderlawcare.com.